Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Borealis Lusitano. This watch is available from borealiswatch.com for €409. Euro. The watch is available in salmon, white, grey, blue and black colour options. Of the colour options, I think this grey version is the best looking. So the Lusitano is inspired by Panpie watches from the 1950s and 1960s such as the Amiga Constellation and it also features an aged leather looking dial. So firstly let's look at the travel case that the watch comes in and then I'll talk you through the specifications of the piece. So the watch comes in a PU leather travel case which is protected by this cardboard outer sleeve you remove. Good attention to detail because it's embossed with Borealis and the brand emblem. Elasticated strap around the stainless steel rivet and the interior is also finished with chocolate brown PU leather to a good standard, good quality stitching and contrasting foam cutout panel in the base which is fully upholstered with contrasting yellow velo fabric. Two elasticated straps which does a good job of securing the watch in shipping and in the underside of the flap lid we have a card. So on the reverse of this Borealis card it has the 12 months warranty and it's filled in with the reference number of the piece. So I'm pleased to report that the Lusitano and all Borealis watches are covered by a 12 month international warranty which is very good. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, we have a 39mm case diameter, we have a 47mm lug to lug measurement, a thickness of 12.8mm and a lug width of 20mm. The beads of rice bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to 18mm at the two button push clasp. The two button push clasp is signed to high standard with the Borealis B emblem and also Borealis in high definition. Nice heavy gauge to the 316L grade stainless steel. I like the mirror polished bevel which is polished to a good standard. No sharp edges, doesn't have sharp corners and the luster to the brushed satin finishing to the flanks and the top side is done very good. Very beautiful brushed satin finishing and they deserve credit because it is high quality finishing on the clasp. So we have a double dome sapphire crystal with clear AR coating on the underside and the clear anti-reflective coating does an excellent job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the mirror polished dolphin hands and also the applied indices. Good legibility to the dial and it's an interesting dial because it does have the pan pie 3D effect of dials from the 1950s and 1960s such as the Amiga Constellation as I refer to. So around the edge of the dial it's sunken around the indices and that complements the double dome sapphire crystal. It has a nice 3D effect rather than just being flat. Now the interesting feature of the Lusitano is the textured finish of the dial. It does look slightly like a meteorite dial, although it's not as metallic and glossy. This has a matte finish to it, but one can clearly see the textures. And I understand that Borealis were trying to replicate the look of aged leather with the Lusitano dials. So it does have that look of a grained leather dial and it does have nice patterns to it which catch the light. So it does add interest to it and it does contrast with the mirror polished applied indices. The indices are correctly proportioned and the dolphin hands are also correctly proportioned. I like the vintage aesthetic they give. So legibility is good and the clear anti-reflective coating performs well. The double dome sapphire crystal is quite thick, it has a domed top hat profile to it as you can see. When I tilt the piece at an oblique angle you can see that there's some slight distortion on the edge due to the thickness but because it's double domed rather than single domed it doesn't have the magnification effect one gets with a single domed sapphire crystal and I like the boxed top hat profile to it because it does give it a 1950s or 1960s pan pie watch effect. Mirror polished bezel is finished to a good standard, solid 316L grade stainless steel and I like the chamfered to it which has flawless mirror polishing and it complements the flawless mirror polishing to the top. So it's got a nice angular profile to it with a chamfer rather than being a domed bezel and I think it works very well because it matches the angular profile of the lugs. The lugs have a nice mirror polished bevel to the edge which is angular as you can see and this really does look like an Amiga Constellation from the 1960s. They also had this kind of angular lug profile to pie pan watches. They also use bead, uh, beads of rice bracelets with curved end links. So this does have the aesthetic of one of those pie pan watches. I think Borealis have done a good job of this. 
The end links articulate very well in the beads of rice bracelet. Mirror polishing to the beads of rice center section is done very well and that contrasts with a beautiful luster to the brass satin finishing to the outer links. And they've also made the correct decision by brass satin finishing the flanks to the case and also the flanks to the bracelet because had they mirror polished the flanks of the head and also the flanks of the bracelet, it would look too shiny and glossy because this is a highly reflective piece due to the mirror polished indices and dolphin hands and also the bezel. The center beads of rice uh, links in the bracelet also are very shiny. So rather than make it too shiny like a dress piece, to make it more like a daily wear piece, the brass satin finishing does dull it down and that's good. So I'll show you the case back. Solid 316L grade stainless steel case back, which provides an effective hermetic seal to 50 meters, which is perfectly acceptable for a daily wear piece. And we've got the Borealis Mermaid engraved to a good standard. Matte's be blasted effect to the center section, and the outer section of the screw down case back is also matte be blasted effect. But then the circumference is mirror polished and it's engraved with Borealis Watch Company and also the specification of the piece. So it's actually 100 meters water resistant, apologies, I said 50 meters. 100 meters for a daily wear piece is perfectly acceptable. So the solid end links are a good tight fit to the head of the piece and we have quick release stainless steel spring bars, which is good. I'm pleased to see quick release spring bars used rather than conventional spring bars. So that negates the need for a spring bar tool if you wish to exchange the beads of rice bracelet for a strap, for example. One detail I really like about it, and they deserve credit for this at this price point, 409 euro, is the use of a quick adjustment clasp, as you can see. And this style of quick adjustment clasp with a ratcheting mechanism, which is spring loaded, works very well. So you simply depress your thumbnail into the clasp and it gives a full 10 millimeters of adjustment. So I'm now on full extension and you can push it back in by 10 millimeters with nice positive clicks. Each click has a nice positive ratcheting mechanism and it works very well because it's a good tight fit inside the body of the micro adjustment clasp. And I'll just show you deploying it. So you press your thumbnail into the trigger and it deploys by 10 millimeters. So one has that on the fly adjustment and it's very good. It works very well and they deserve credit for this because often at this price point, micro brands will take the default option of simply drilling four holes in the flanks of the body of the clasp and simply use a spring bar to get the micro adjustment. So rather than having four holes in the flanks, they've opted for this more expensive option of the micro adjustment clasp. And I like it. It works very well. It's smooth. It deploys very smoothly. And also it clicks back in with nice positive clicks. So it's good, it's well done and they deserve credit for it. Right, so I'll give you a wrist shot so you can see how it fits on my eight inch wrist. Two button push clasp, snap shut with a nice positive click and the two triggers have a medium resistance. They feel nice and solid. I like the spring loaded action of the two triggers. It feels reliable and solid. It is a well executed two button push clasp. So the fit of this piece is very good. I like the 39 millimeter head of the piece because it's compact. It does give wrist presence, but for a daily wear piece, it doesn't feel too large or top heavy. It's not a bulky piece. The flanks are quite slab sided, and I think Borealis could reduce the thickness of the piece by one millimeter. Bearing in mind, it does have a tall box top hat style crystal, which does add significant height to it. This is only 12.8 millimeters thick. So really anything under 13 millimeters will easily slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear uh, business shirts. So it is practical at 12.8, but I think it could be further enhanced if they made it slightly thinner by one millimeter, either by using a lower profile double dome sapphire crystal or alternatively reducing the height of the flanks because they are slightly tall and slab sided because this is a daily wear piece. It should be slightly thinner. If this were 12 millimeters, I think it would improve the aesthetic of it because it is a inspired watch. It should be like a 1950s or 1960s pie pan watch such as the Amiga Constellation. And they were lower profile and thinner, although they did have a similar boxed top hat style crystal and beads of rice bracelets with angular lugs. So it does have the aesthetic, although it does look slightly thicker, um, but it is very comfortable to wear for long periods of time, such as eight to 12 hours per day. The angular lugs do wrap around the wrist very well. As you can see, there's a minimal, a minimal gap underneath the tips of the lugs, which is good. And despite not having female pivoted end links, the beads of rice end links are male formation. It does pull the end link in the bracelet snug to the angular lug. So it does work very well, wraps around the wrist well. 
The Beta Vice bracelet is comfortable, it doesn't pull arm hairs, and there's no sharp edges, no burrs to the flanks, and it wraps around the wrist very well. It feels very comfortable to wear. It feels like a Jubilee style bracelet. That's the kind of comfort level. It's got a nice flex to the Beads of Rice links, and it just looks like a very aesthetically pleasing piece. The mirror polished Dolphin hands and the applied indices on the Pan Pi dial catch the light. But it's not so glossy and reflective that you can't read the time. And the clear AR coating works very well, and the grained finish of the leather effect dial works very well because it refracts the light rather than ref reflecting it as per a sunburst dial. And that matte grey does improve the legibility because the light underneath the double dome crystal doesn't bounce around and reflect around the pie pan dial. As per metallic finish dial, the matte finish means that it refracts the light and the legibility is good. So it's a good looking piece and the aged leather effect dial does give it some interest. I personally think it would look better with either a matte grey dial without the textured finish or alternatively a silver sunbow star because I think a silver sunbow star would complement the aesthetics of a pie pan watch from the 1950s or 1960s. Alternatively matte grey because it would just look smoother with a pie pan shape of the dial, the 3D effect of the pie pan dial. But I appreciate this is subjective. Some collectors will actually really like the grained leather finish to it, which does look like a meteorite dial. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So the applied indices do not have loom, as one would expect, because this isn't a dive piece, this is a daily wear piece. But the Dolphin hands, which are mirror polished, do have some BGW9 Superloom Nova. So let's see how the Dolphin handset performs when it's charged up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged, and as you can see, we're clearly looking at five to six layers, and Borealis deserve credit here, because they could have used the cost-cutting measure of using three to four layers of BGW9. One has to appreciate there isn't a large area, a large plot on dolphin hands. They're very thin and pointed. So it's difficult to apply five to six layers to a set of dolphin hands. Often it's the case that brands do not loom dolphin hands because they're just too slim and too thin. But as you can see, Borealis have done a, well, a good job. These are well executed dolphin hands. The proportion of the hour and the minute hand is correct. One can clearly differentiate between the hour and minute hand. And they have actually managed to apply five to six layers because you can see the BGW9 is clearly glowing brightly and it will continue to glow for a good length of time. If this was three to four layers, they would, beginning, they would begin to fade fast, but they're not. And they're very good. And I think they deserve credit because it is difficult to loom dolphin hands and they've done a good job of it. Um, so as you can see, good performance and nice to see some BGW9 used on this pan pie dial. And they made the correct decision by not adding loom to the applied indices because this is inspired by 1950s and 1960s pieces, pie pan watches. They didn't have tritium on the applied indices in the 1960s. The indices were just mirror polished as per this piece. So they've done it right. So I like it. So I think they've done a good job. Right, so let's discuss the movement used. This uses the Miota Calibre 8315 automatic. So the architecture of the 8315 is based upon the 8200. It's an 8000 series Miota movement. Now that's the standard grade of Miota caliber. The 9000 series is the premium series of Miota calibers. But there's something I like about this in particular. This 8315 has a 60 hour power reserve. Now one would normally expect a 40 hour power reserve with the 8000 series of Miota calibers such as the 8215. The 8315 actually has the longest lasting power reserve of all Miota movements. 60 hours is the maximum Miota can produce. So it has 21 joules, it runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 3 hertz. 60 hours of power reserve is excellent. Hand winding and hacking is very good. And the stated accuracy is plus or minus uh, sorry, minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day. So a rather wide accuracy range as per all 8000 series Miota calibers. But I'm pleased to report that this one has been well regulated by Borealis and they deserve credit. It's regulated to plus six, uh, plus six seconds per day when, when fully wound to its maximum 60 hour power reserve. 
So it's excellent with regards to the power reserve and it can be regulated to better than minus 20 to plus 40. Plus 6 is very good. The negative of the 8315 is that it does have a noisy rotor and unfortunately that's a characteristic of all 8000 series Miota calibers. The 8215 also has the same issue. They have a unidirectional winding rotor rather than bidirectional and the problem is when it spins to wind the movement it does have a audible sound to it. You can hear the ball bearings in the ball race and the rotor spinning round and it is noticeable on wrist. When it's winding you can hear the rotor winding. The Miota 9000 series such as the 9015 that doesn't have the same problem. They have a quieter rotor. The ball bearings are more quiet. So it's a premium grade, the 9000 series. 8000 series is the standard grade and Miyota do cut corners with regards to the build quality and quality control. It's a good, reliable, well-proven workhorse caliber. There's no reliability issues with the 8000 series such as this 8315. So really the only negative is the noisy rotor. But I like the 60 hour power reserve, that is good for an automatic because it means you don't have to manually wind the piece every day, you don't have to wear it for 8 hours per day, you don't have to put it on an automatic watch winder to keep it fully wound. 60 hours is very impressive and as I've detailed this is the longest lasting Miota movement in terms of power reserve, 60 is the absolute maximum. They typically have a 40 hour power reserve so 60 is very impressive. I think it's the correct choice. But, however, had they used, had Borealis used a 9000 series such as the 9015, they could have slimmed down the case because the 8315, like all 8000 series calibers, is a thick movement. And of course, the result of that is this is 12.8. If they had used a premium grade of Miota caliber such as the 9015, they could have reduced the thickness of the head of the piece, the flanks, by one millimetre. This would be 11.8 rather than 12.8 thick, bearing in mind it does have a tall uh, double-domed boxed top hat crystal. The case back is flat. It, it does have a flat centre section, so it's not the case that the case back is thick because it provides 100 metres of hermetic seal. Uh, it's just the case of the head of the piece, the thickness of the flanks is too tall. But, however, it does have a nice vertical brush satin finishing to it and it is finished to a good standard, no sharp edges to the undercut to the case. So, let's test the screw down crown execution. Coin edge finished, nice chamfer to the edge of it, mirror polished domes cap and it's signed with a Borealis B with a matte B blasted effect to it, so very well done. Let's test unscrewing it. Feels nice and smooth. It's not silky smooth, but it is smooth, it's adequate and it unscrews with a short number of turns so you don't have to keep unscrewing the crown for a long time to get it to pop out. So let's test manually winding it. One can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up in the Calibre 8315 automatic. So it feels very similar to other 8000 series movements such as the 8215. It has that characteristic light feeling up to the mainspring and the gearing, minimal friction to it so it is a pleasure to manually wind it. 40 full turns will fully wind it from a dead stop. When it, well, the main spring is totally exhausted, you can fully wind an 8315 with 40 clockwise turns. So although it does have a long power reserve of 60 hours versus 40, 40 turns is enough. And if you wear the piece eight hours per day, that will wind it fully. So it will keep running for 60 hours. So it feels good to manually wind. This does have hacking, which is good. Other early versions of 8000 series movements had hand winding but they didn't hack and that was a negative of the Miota 8000 series. For example early versions of the 8215 did not hack but then Miota changed it, they updated the movements such as the 8215 and the 8315 to introduce hacking. So it's good this one does have hacking. If I pull out the set, sorry, the first clip position is the quick set date complication. So just bear with me, I'll pull it out to the first click. So if you look at the date window at three o'clock, you can see it does have a quick set complication. It clicks over with a nice light click. Every day of the month advances with a quick set. It feels rather like a Seiko NH35A, although the clicking of the quick set complication is lighter than a 35A. So it works well. The only thing to note is it does have a large mirror polished frame around the date window. And due to the pan pie dial having a 3D effect, the date complication, the date will, is sunk quite deep beneath the pie pan dial. So the problem with a large silver frame is it creates a shadow around the date 
uh, window. So I would like to see Borealis enlarge the proportions of the date window to make it bigger because with this large silver frame, that shadow does reduce the legibility. You really have to look at the date complications square on in order to read it because the um, date is quite small. The, the Arabic numerals on the date wheel are quite small. So in that shaded date window, they're quite difficult to read. So the proportions could be enlarged to improve the legibility, but the quick set complication works well. It clicks over to the next day of the month well. Pulling us out to the second click position hacks the movement. If you look at the second hand, it's now stopped dead, so it's possible to set the time precisely to the second. Nice slight resistance to the caliber 8315. It feels smooth all the way through the three hours, both clockwise and anticlockwise, and there's minimal back play. There is some slight back play when you rotate the crown clockwise and anti-clockwise. There's slight back play in the gearing to get the minute hand to respond. So that's something to bear in mind. It's not as responsive as the OTA 9000 series movement, such as the 9015. That feels tighter, but that's a premium grade of Miota caliber. This is just a characteristic of 8000 series Miota calibers. They all have this slight back play. When you rotate the crown clockwise and anti-clockwise, the minute hand doesn't immediately respond you have to rotate the crown a little bit more in order to get the hand to move, but it does suffice. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. You'll see the second hand begins to sweep around the dial once again. So let's test screwing it back down. Immediate thread pickup. So the meshing, the machining and quality control of the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube are good. There's a good thread pickup. So Borealis deserve credit because they've got the crown execution good. 100 meters of hermetic seal is good for a daily wear piece. 50 meters would suffice. 100 is really excessive. And the screw down crown does work very well. They could have used the cost cutting measure of a push pull crown, but they didn't. They used a screw, a screw down crown. And I think that's good. So it's well done, quality control is good, finishing is good, no sharp edges to it, but it does feel grippy and tactile. It's also correctly proportioned. Right, so last I'll summarise the piece, what do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the Watch Me 2 criteria, it should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So the price point of this piece is €409. Euro. I think it's good quality and I think it's good value at 409 euro. The thing I most like about it is this is a well executed clasp. The ratcheting mechanism works very well. The quick adjustment works very well. I like the spring loaded trigger. It's a good system and the bracelet is well finished. No sharp edges, no burrs to it. It articulates well, doesn't have stiff links and it doesn't pull arm hair. It's a very comfortable, flexible beads of rice bracelet. So the quality of the finishing to the head of the piece, the case back, the bracelet and the clasp are all good. I think in order to make it excellent quality and excellent value, Borealis could reduce the price point. For example, if this was between 300 and 350 euro versus 409 euro, I would say it was excellent quality and excellent value. It does face some stiff competition as a daily wear piece in the mid tier, um, at 400, sorry, in the low tier at 409 euro because it is using a Miota 8000 series movement. It's not using a premium Miota caliber 9000 series. If this had a 9015, I would say yes, it's excellent quality and excellent value. But with an 8315, it's the standard grade of Miota caliber. So I'm going to say good quality and good value, but not excellent and excellent. So really it needs a 9015 in order to be excellent quality and value at 409 alternatively, alternatively reduce the price to 300 to 350 and then you can say yes it justifies it using an 8315 but 60 hours of power reserve is very good and I do like that a lot so I'm going to recommend it to you for your consideration I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Borealis Lusitano please feel free to post your own comments below the video thank you for watching